Hello everyone, my name is Miranda. Um, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm in a slightly different place. Um, in fact, I'm in a different place. There's not really any slightly about it. Um, yeah, I moved. Um, so still figuring out the whole filming setup thing, but um, I just thought I'd, you know, do a little quick June wrap up for you all. Um, so yeah, that's what we're, that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm just going to talk you through all the books that I read in the month of Juin. Yeah, it was a pretty good reading month, to be honest. Um, I read five books um, and they were all pretty good. So the first book I read was Real Life by Brandon Taylor, um, which is kind of a, well, it's a campus novel. So it's set um, in a university um, in the US um, and you follow um, Wallace, who is a graduate student um, in kind of biochemistry, I guess. He's doing kind of weird things with nematodes, I think. Um, and yeah, and his kind of group of friends. Um, and Wallace is a black gay man and he um, is feeling kind of very isolated within his group of friends, within the university generally, is kind of becoming very disillusioned with like his life and doesn't know what to do with himself. So it follows him um, and his kind of group of friends um, and his sort of movings around um, over this one weekend, um, but it goes through it with a very, very like fine toothed comb. So you get a lot of like his thoughts, um, kind of all his movements and Basically, you just kind of get right into his head and what he's feeling. And some of it is like really mundane, some of it's very normal. Um, and some of it is like quite kind of everyday sort of um, discussions with friends. But also underlying it all is this kind of sense of, you know, Wallace doesn't know what he's doing with his life. And he feels incredibly, um, dissatisfied and isolated and numb a lot of the time from um kind of yeah just disconnected from everything around him um partly because of um his identity but also um just because he is feeling a bit lost you know he's in his like mid 20s just feeling a bit um confused and lost and i actually love this a lot more than i thought i was going to um this was a Originally it was a five star prediction from that I made last year, um, around this kind of time last year I think, um, and I still haven't read all of the books that I talked about in that five star prediction video, but I will at some point, hopefully. Um, yeah, so I originally thought I was going to rate it five stars because pretty much everyone I know who's read it has loved it. Um, it was shortlisted for the Booker Prize in 2020, I think. Um, and yeah, it's just a very well-loved book and it really sounded like my kind of thing, um, you know, in that you follow just one character um, and you get to know them really, really well. Um, and it, it did take me a long time to get into it. Um, I think it's very, very readable um, while also being incredibly, like, emotionally complex. Um, so I, I was reading it fairly quickly, but it took me quite a while to get invested. Um, but I think what I loved about it so much is that it reads in a very kind of timeless way. Um, so it reads almost like a classic. Um, it reminded me a lot of um, James Baldwin's writing, um, where it kind of just feels like it's about, you know, people generally and it does the kind of where it's set and the characters are almost in incidental. It's just about like the meaning of life and human nature and all that kind of stuff. But um yeah it, it's it kind of I don't know if it felt like it read like I was reading a classic because it's so detailed and so kind of emotional um and very like just delicate and it, it made me quite emotional um I don't remember it very well already it's kind of fading for me but I did really enjoy it at the time um and yeah I think it's a good one I've already been speaking for seven minutes and we're only one book in so it's going great then I read um, The Bread the Devil Need by um, Lisa Allen Agostini. Um, so this was shortlisted for the Women's Prize this year um, and I got it once it was longlisted because, well, actually I got it sent to me for my birthday um, by Charlotte from Night Out the Shelf Esteem. Um, and yeah, so this was shortlisted um, and I, 
I think I read it before the prize the winner was announced. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Um, but basically, this is about a um, woman in Trinidad, I believe. Yes. Um, who is basically she she works in um, a kind of clothes shop. She loves where she works, and she's a manager there. Um, and she has like friends there but not no one particularly that she's close to um but the kind of key point that you find her in is that um she is in um an abusive relationship um but she kind of crucially she knows that it is abusive and that it's wrong and and she is choosing to stay in it um and basically it kind of just looks at that um, you just follow her for a, a, a kind of event happens that sort of promote provokes more like action but it's it's it says it on the blurb but I don't think it's very much like it's not exactly an inciting incident where everything kind of spirals um you sort of just follow her over a few like months um and get to know her and her life um and it's so so beautiful I really love this um and I found it so, again, really readable, um, but incredibly, like, moving. The ca the main character, like, the narrator, has such an amazing, like, life to her. I don't know how else to describe it. She just feels so real and so, like, vibrant. Um, and even though she is going through all these horrible, horrible things, you're always, like, there's there's just always a sense of, like, I don't know, kind of uplift, even though she's sad, but, and and having a terrible time. It's really hard to describe, um, but it's, I think it makes this really special. It's very, very difficult to read at times. Um, I would say massive trigger warnings for really, like, quite explicit um, sexual abuse um, and child abuse. Um, so if you don't want to read about those, steer clear um but otherwise um it is just it, it's i don't know I, uh, it's just really good <laughs> then i read um milk blood heat by dantiel w moniz um i listened to this on audio actually um and as often happens with me in audiobooks i listened to it over quite a long period of time um and it kind of i don't know the impact sort of faded for me um and also it was a collection of short stories um so i kind of which was good because i could listen to you know each short story like individually but i think i i just kept kind of forgetting what was happening and what i had previously listened to so i think this basically this is a short story collection which kind of follows like various different um primarily it's young women um especially young black women in america um and it kind of it looks at lots of different things like female friendships generally like female relationships kind of growing up um motherhood um like family relationships between women and all of it is like beautifully written um i really enjoyed the writing um and some of the stories are incredibly like impactful um and again it was one that i enjoyed while i was listening to it i would recommend it um if it sounds like something you're interested in but i can't it wasn't one that left an impression with me personally but that's also partly because of how i read it so it's my fault essentially then i read pachinko by Min Jin lee um which i think was another one of my five star predictions um cannot remember but I thought, I, I've had this on my TBR for ages, um, and it's like a historical fiction family saga um, following this Korean family um, who moved to Japan um, in, I think like the 1920s or 30s, maybe? Uh, and yeah, it kind of follows this family and like, I think, I mean, you follow lots of generations, many generations, many different children. Um, and then the children's children and all the different children's partners and their children. It gets quite confusing towards the end because um, there are so many children. So I really enjoyed this. Um, I 
yeah, it's just it's just a good read, really. Um, I think it's the writing isn't anything particularly mind blowing for me. Um, it was very readable. Um, I didn't get particularly invested in the characters until again quite late on, um, and I then found it quite hard to invest in the kind of almost like the second generation of characters because I felt like you didn't spend as much time with them um, as you did the sort of like there's the first group of um, kind of family members um, and you spend quite a long time with them getting to know them and I you know there were some really really emotional moments um, and that really hit me but then when it gets to kind of like the last third, you then start like skipping through children quite quickly. Um, and that was, I don't know, it just felt like suddenly loads of time was passing and um, I kind of didn't enjoy that bit quite as much. Um, but it is really, I think it's really, really great, like a really good story. Um, I really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, if you like historical fiction, family sagas, it's definitely like a really good one um yeah and also i really want to watch the tv show now because it's come out um and i completely forgot about it but yeah um i'm definitely gonna watch the tv show let me know if you've seen it because i want to know if it's good then the last book i read was the grass is singing by doris lessing so this i mentioned in my video where i predicted or like guessed what was going to happen in stories um in books that i hadn't read and i couldn't remember what they were about based on their first line. That's a long description of it. Um, it was my last video, it's pretty unhinged to be honest, but you know, it was a fun time. Um, anyway, I read the first line of The Grass is Singing um, for that video and it kind of hooked me and I was like, I wanna read that now. Um, so I did and it was good. It was good, I liked it. Um, I feel like that's literally my experience with every book I've read this year. I haven't had a five star read yet, yet this year, which is really sad considering it's all already July. Um, but yeah, all the books I've read have just been like good, really good, and I've enjoyed them, but none of like I've fallen in love with, you know? Anyway, so The Grass is Singing opens with um, a murder. Um, so you find out at the very beginning that a farmer's wife um, has been murdered. Um, it's set in, um, I think it's Southern Rhodesia in probably like the early 20th century. Um, and you follow a kind of group of British, um, like farmers, um, and in the kind of colonial like period, um, who, yeah, um, well, I say a group, it's mostly a kind of husband and wife. Um, so you find at the beginning that this woman has been murdered they think that it was the um, like African servant who did it um, and he has been arrested um, and basically you see the kind of interactions with um, like how the, the kind of people around them um, react to this murder and the characters um, and then you go back and follow the woman um, through like pretty much her entire life um, and her marriage and her kind of mental deterioration through um, her marriage to this man who she doesn't really like um, in a very, very isolated farm. It's really interesting because this book was written in 1950 um, and it's very much explicitly a kind of like anti-colonial book. Um, so the characters in it are really racist and horrible to their like you know African workers um and basically just don't like see them as animals um but it's kind of there's like an interesting sort of divide between like how people who have recently come from Britain see African people and then um how you know you kind of have like how people feel like they are forced to sort of adapt into this like different way of seeing Africans um as they kind of become um kind of enveloped in this farming community so there's that kind of element of it but then it's also very much about like just this woman's interior mind so you spend most of the book inside her thoughts 
and her kind of varying feelings and weirdnesses um and yeah so you you don't really get any kind of perspective from the um africans um and i kind of i don't know i don't know how i feel about that because I, I sort of feel like there's an there's definitely another story that could be told it didn't go quite far enough for me i kind of wanted a bit more from it um but the writing and like descriptions of the like land and the setting was stunning it's very much about like how the sort of physical setting impacts on this woman's like interior life and i can really like feel that like all it's it's really well written and really like just well done um with what it was trying to do i just think i i wanted a bit more from it um but that's fine that's just my personal opinion doesn't matter that's it that's all the books i read in june um i will have more videos up very soon um you know best books of the year so far all that kind of stuff it's all coming um and yeah i'm sorry that i was um away for a little you know 10 days or something instead of a week i know shock um i moved house so it was stressful um but yeah anyway so thank you very much for watching um i will see you very soon